This is an overview of an article entitled, The Effect of Ascertainment Bias on Estimates of Patient Mortality in Inherited Cardiac Diseases, published in the October 2018 issue of Circulation, Genomic, and Precision Medicine. Accurate survival estimates for genetic diseases are important in shared clinical decision-making among physicians, clinical geneticists, genetic counselors, and families with inherited cardiac disease. In genetic studies that identify a novel causative gene, usually a severely affected proband and his or her relatives are described in the initial report of the gene's role in disease. The initial report of the gene would then potentially underestimate survival because the patients who seek medical attention in specialty genetic cardiology clinics tend to have more severe disease and thus are at higher risk for mortality. This might then introduce ascertainment bias, which is the systematic over or underestimation of the true frequency of an event due to the way the data were collected. In the case of human genetics, Performing initial studies on severely symptomatic individuals and their families may introduce bias in survival forecasts. Without publication of subsequent genetic cascade screening, which is the process by which other probands and relatives are phenotyped to provide extended data, we may have underestimates of survival rates for inherited cardiac diseases. The authors of the study therefore hypothesized that probands and mutation-positive relatives described in original gene discovery publications represent biased cohorts with increased disease-related mortality. For three autosomal dominantly inherited cardiac diseases caused by a founder mutation, the authors compared the median age of survival of the original cohort with the median age of survival of the cohort with genetic cascade screening. The diseases examined include DPP6-associated idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, SCN5A overlap syndrome, and PLN R14 deletion-mediated arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. Here we will focus on analysis of DPP6-associated IVF presented in Figure 1 of the paper. The authors found that the median age of survival for DPP6-associated IVF was 44.6 years in 2008, which increased to 68.2 years when more families and haplotype positive relatives were added to the analysis. This difference in survival forecast is seen in Figure 1a, with an improved survival curve after genetic cascade screening was performed and incorporated into the analysis. This trend is also seen in Figure 1b, which shows the increase in the median age of survival over time due to more inclusion of haplotype positive subjects. Although the gender distribution between individuals included in the original and extended cohorts did not differ significantly, the survival curves for males and females were significantly different, with higher survival in female individuals as seen here in Figure 1c. So what does all of this mean for clinical practice? The authors present for the first time a quantitation of the effect of ascertainment bias on the prognosis of large groups of patients with inherited cardiac disease. Their findings may affect the information disseminated by physicians to patients and also influence clinical decision making in terms of whether or not to proceed with placement of an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, highlighting the importance of collecting and publishing data from genetic cascade screening beyond the originally reported cohorts.